So we're back in the shed. Um, so I'm going to show you some of the updates and the things that we've covered for this uh, July update, our big summer update. And this was one of the first projects we did was the uh, wagons. If you remember these that were little hoppers, that was part of what we did. We did these ones and then uh, down here. So these are the other sort of like wagons we did, little vans. Now if you remember, they're all different colors and uh, I showed you how to quickly spray them over. Uh, I've just added weathering powders, milk transfers, uh, decals to them. I uh, used decal fix and I've also used a decal fix to sort of use in with the weathering powder actually made her quite a, a nice little touch and um, yeah sort of really works quite well. I'm really happy the way these have come out and uh, as, as you guys have said in the video you know, a lot of you have tried this and uh, are going to tap into this uh, certainly reuse them little wagons. I actually saw someone's comment on uh, through Facebook saying that they bought four of these wagons for 50p at a boot fair uh, so these things are out there, so do um, do do tap in and do search for these things because these will make great little additions. Uh, one of you guys wrote about tissue paper on the top. I've never tried that, so that's something that I will uh, have a little experiment with. Uh, again, weathering is all very new to me, um, but I actually really enjoy taking hold and giving it a go. Uh, but you know, you know what? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six wagons there. Um, you're paying about £12 a wagon for something like this, probably more I would have guessed. Um, these are only Hornby and Lima. Um, so yeah, really looks good. So that was our wagon project and certainly worth a go. If any of you guys have tried this, do let me know how you get on because um, it would be really interesting to hear your views and what you've done. So uh, see if I can learn any more tips and stuff. So this is the Gage Master Prodigy Wi-Fi unit and she's all up and running. So let's put the uh, camera on the stand and then I can show you how the app works. So this is how we program the uh, Prodigy system. So you go to your Wi-Fi settings, make sure it's on your network, which is MRC Wi-Fi, which is connected and that's it. Then you open up the throttle app uh, and you can see I've got a little, that's on there, and it's got track power there. If I switch that off, track goes off, switch it on, and it goes on. It's gonna take a little bit while just to resync because I just disconnected that. So you really have to just wait a couple of seconds. Once you get it connected, it should be good. Uh, you've got settings there. I've changed this to cab three because I've got two other cabs that identifies which one's which. You still need to keep these cabs to um, do your programming and uh, renumbering your, your decoders. So you'll still need to use these. Um, but you can use the two together, but you would need a bit more of a booster because it um, obviously you're running two lots of power because this is powering up your Wi-Fi. So that's something I've noticed you've got, you might need a bit more power to, to run the system. But other than that, it does work. Uh, so you've got other settings there. I won't go into all that. You can reset it back to your, see, re trying to work out what it's doing now. So I then just go back to here, reset that. Just make sure that's all connected. Um, there we go, track power's on, it's good. So uh, to select a cab, you just go to one of these up here. Um, we've got road, I'm gonna to go to that one there. Just got the stop button quite close. And then we go to throttle, there's your throttle. And then to ch set your loco, um, if I go, I literally you just go in there and you type your loco number, which is 09, set, and it's green anyway, so that's good. Go to your throttle, and then you can, um, you just choose it which you'll see it will come round if I take the camera off. All right, so we'll do this from here. So there you go, I'm now running the train. You can take it up a little bit more. Take it up, there we go, so there you go. So this is now running on Wi-Fi now. Uh, very clever. Um, it has. I've had a few hiccups with it. Um, I just think it's just the way I'm using it and maybe something I've got to get used to. Um, certainly the first one I had a, just wouldn't connect, this one's really good now, um, so it's, uh, it's just doing what it should do and you can stop it, there you go, all runs. And then you've got the function here, you can set the lights on, so you just click that 
and then you can push F1 so you get, get all to your little F1 buttons and then you can just run it again. If it's a little bit too responsive, you can change the uh, settings to um, not be so uh, erratic, so you can change a lot of that. Um, you can see she's running around there, I'm going to bring it to a slow, slow down the station. I am doing this one handed, so it's probably not the easiest, but you can the tap just underneath there. And we'll bring it to the station. Let's see if we can do this with two in shot. Bring that down. It's going to five. And then we're just going to go. There we go. And stop. So there you go. So that's running. This little cab is running the whole out, so it's really good. Um, very good system, and again, it's just running the smartphone, uh, iPhone. So yeah, that's uh, the new update for this layout. Um, I do need to buy a booster unit uh, to purely get the lights out of it, to help run it, because it just needs a bit more power to run the, this and the cab. Uh, this works fine on its own, but running the two, it just needs a bit more power. So yeah, I'm just gonna stop it there so you can see it all runs. There you go. So that's our Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is really good. Um, I like that system. Um, it's really clever, and so a new new gadget to allow. We also added the lighting to the layout, which was the strip light that you can see above there. And uh, this is cheap, effective, and really, really simple. You can see that's just a, a metal trunking. This is the actual trunking you put into like plaster to hide cables, that's what it is. Um, so uh, thanks to George um, for um, highlighting that to me. He knows who he is. <laughs> I left a comment saying, Gary, you know what that is? Um, I forgot to say what it was in the video that I did about the lighting. Um, so again, the trunking is galvanized steel and it is uh, something like two pound, two pound 60, two pound 80 a, a length. Um, so it was the cheapest sort of strongest manipulable thing that I'd find that would hold the lighting. Uh, being metal, it really uh, adheres really well. Them little strips really stick well. And um, with all that heat we've had, none of, none of it's come off or budged. Unfortunately, when you stick these little strippy lights to wood, um, they tend to sort of buckle off after a while and come, come down. But uh, the effect in here is, is as the day I put it up, and it's only been uh, probably about three weeks now. And with all the heat and all the rest of it, I haven't had any problems. So um, it's a bit Heath Robinson in the corner there. I put some like duct tape over it just to stop the light bleed. Um, but that's purely just so um, it doesn't shine in my eyes. But looking through there, um, get a nice little look. I really like the way that looks now. Uh, get a nice um, sort of light level. Um, really good. These are classed as daylight. Uh, you get cool or warm. But these are branded, as I say, as daylight. Uh, I'm not sure how that fits in between them, but I would imagine on the cool side. But it really brings out all the uh, definition and uh, all the look on things. So really, really cool. So yeah, that is the lighting. And say it goes all the way around the whole of the layout, so it goes all the way down here. Sorry for the camera shake. Gonna get a bit of this on this on this particular video. And it again goes down, we did it all the way down there. I have actually got the lights on in the middle of the shed, which are also LEDs, and they're a lot more expensive. Um and they just stay these the ones in the middle are more of a, a warm light, so I've got a warm and a cool daylights in effect so I've got the best of both worlds uh, so it doesn't get so many hard shadows and uh, that's why I get that nice little sort of look from there so yeah really happy with that um, our lighting added to the layout I definitely definitely heard some of you guys giving it a go and um, really excited to get this laid down and uh, it's really cheap and easy as I say
So of course the last video on the list was our trees and grass if you remember I'm just going to zoom in to the tree to the left to the right there sorry so there we go we're going to focus in there we go so you get a nice uh, you can see it get that nice little look at these trees and grass and um, I've certainly got a nice little layer in there now I'm really happy the way this is turned out you can see it's all given a right, a right appearance how I want to well, what I do like about it is uh, when I put the camera here I'm actually going to focus the camera onto the signal box in the background so it'll blur out the trees and this is a nice little effect uh, so if I just tap to there so you, all the trees in the sort of in front of me are blurry and that gives me a nice sort of look uh, in the distance so it's real good for your photography or filming your layout or just the actually looking down low um, so I'm really quite happy with that so yeah our trees and grass um, I've just upgraded them added a few more um, I'm not a lover of these foam trees as they call them this sort of um, but I've made the best I can out of them but I, I do actually like these ones uh, these are really smart they have come out really well so yeah so that is our grass and our trees and uh, we did this using our little fly squat um, which you remember is just a bug catcher from the pound shop um, I've actually redeveloped mine I'll just show you that so this is my um, static grass maker and uh, you can see I've just I put a Tupperware uh, sort of cup thing on the end there a little tub and the lid just pops off so if you remember I had a box shaped thing which worked really well I just um, changed it for this and the wire you see that's the wire there and when that wire touches the gauze and that makes the connection so it's really simple I uh, haven't got to worry about any wires in the lid it's all uh, all done and then once that other end there this bit touches the scenic side with the glue uh, the two make the connection and creates the static so yeah uh, that's what I did all my grass with a couple of you guys wrote in and asked me how I did that so yeah, if you're doing any of these projects, uh, the wagons, the grass, creating the lighting or creating back scenery, drop me a comment. Um, it'd be nice to hear about your projects or any things you're sort of struggling to do. And um, I'm always here on hand to spread some advice and give some help. So um, always around. So yeah, really interesting. So this is my new addition to the layout. This is a little eBay win and a nice little shunter. Um, it's a little bit out of period, well it's in period, just not quite, I'm more BR, but I just really like it. It was a good win on eBay and it's such a lovely little engine. Um, so yeah, there is some good bargains out there and some good engines and some really honest people. So I'd like to say thank you to the sellers uh, for uh, making this available. Uh, I've just painted the inside and don't think quite pick that up and I've added a little matey to drive it and if you can see him in there there you go so yeah looks quite good he's pulling my little wagons quite nicely there so another little shunter to the layout I do like shunters as you know
Okay, so I'm making a few of these uh, retaining walls. Uh, these are wheels kits. Um, if you ever want to use a good glue, this is Plastic Magic from Deluxe Materials. Highly recommend it. Um, you'll see how quick this bonds. It is amazing. Um, a lot of the Deluxe Materials stuff is absolutely fantastic. Uh, whether it's, uh, they've got a whole range of stuff, I should say. Um, so really do check out their stuff. And to be honest with you, you'll find making models and doing your jobs a lot easier now this is a solvent based it's got no smell it's very safe to use and you watch this I literally holding that in place I'm just gonna drop a bit of glue in there well it's not glue it's just like a solvent and really that's about it and I'm gonna let go of that now and you can see that it's now bonded okay that is that quick it's like 10 seconds it's quicker than super glue but you don't get stuck together with it absolutely amazing stuff so I'll do that again. Find the uh, feathered side. That's the feathered side. Just hold it in position. Get it to where I need it to be. Line it up. And it's got a little tiny brush. You get two brushes. This is with a fine one. Just dab it, it. Literally just dab it down the side. And that's done. I let go of it and it's bonded. And that is now set. That's how quick this stuff is. It's amazing stuff to use. Plastic magic. Um, Again, it's deluxe materials and you get a spare brush. Absolutely brilliant, especially if you're making any kits up. So looking back also we did some ballasting so we added all these little stones to the track if you remember we put these all in and we had, had to sort of ballast this whole area and, uh, and then you remember I sort of weathered it over and I used weathering powders but I also showed you an option how I use a spray gun um, because I actually prefer using an airbrush spray gun. Um, it, certainly, it certainly had to be done this was a whole part uh, that was stopping the process uh, of finishing this part of the layout um, and the reason why which will tie quite nicely to the next section um, having that done has now sort of spurred me on to sort of finish this little bit here as you can see the station car park and the cars have actually got somewhere to come into and park up and then you can actually get to the station down the back there um, whereas before you had to sort of climb over the railway tracks which I felt was a bit unsafe um, but they can now drive off and go shopping um, or you can come down from the little station at the end there sorry about the wobbly camera so this is a little scratch build underground station uh, tube station that I built 
and this was based and this was based on East Acton and uh, it's just a scratch build so I literally cut all the windows out I actually made the windows the roof and everything else just using uh, printed um, wheels kits the brick paint brick sheets sorry from wheels kits um, so yeah it was quite fun um, a bit challenging uh, might do some more of these sort of things need to add some more buildings along here so I've got some more kits to um, dismantle and play with so I should probably add them in here in time so this is the whole new section uh, this is based on Old Oak Common Road uh, so you've got the underground station which goes down to the underground which is down there uh, which is my spare track underneath the layout and that will develop in time that's a whole new different project but then this is the new bridge and it goes right across here now and it goes through a little portal tunnel down there uh, sorry it goes through a little bridge down there that I've still got to finish off and then you've got an access ramp down to the depot which goes to there uh, so these guys when they finish their shift they can actually go home and uh, they were complaining they didn't like being stuck there day in day out so it gives them a purpose so yeah um, certainly looking good this was the section of uh, bridge that um, was a very brick colour and I sort of just uh, finished it and tied it all in and it all ties in quite well now um, I'd like to say thanks to Paul for, at Gorgorham Hall for all your techniques on making girders which um, I used to make this girder bridge and he's got a great tutorial on that to so tap into that and he also shows you how to do this weathering on bricks um, you are a lot better at doing it than I am and uh, certainly had fun I found it easier on the wheels kits because they're a thick uh, the bricks are actually more embossed than the actual slaters kits uh, the slater brick is very lightly embossed so it's really hard to get the, the grain in so um, I've got a good definition on these and maybe I shall try and buy uh, some um, good quality brickwork that's uh, more heavily embossed and you'll get a better sort of weathering effect on it so yeah it really really sort of works well I'm really happy the way this has come out this whole section in the middle is uh, removable, so because I've got the main door there. Uh, recently, I went over to see uh, Fr Fred at Willoughby Castle, and he has a section where the door he comes through the, into the layout, and he has a, like a little river and a bridge bit. It was amazing, um, but he also can lift the bridge up. Uh, so this was an idea that we sat and had a cup of coffee and uh, a few biscuits and shared great ideas. So thanks, Fred your hospitality and a real great day out catching up on old times and uh, you give me some ideas on how to uh, fix this end of the layout um, it was actually when as soon as I got back from Fred's I was drawing like mad on paper and then started building so it's uh, this is where it got me to so it's really good so thanks for that Fred So all in all, with all the updates that we've done this month, it has been really, really busy. Um, I'm really proud to announce the, the launch of my new website, which is cheekytech.com. Um, this used to sit on my old website, which was gaztech.co.uk. They're now both intertwined into one, uh, one website. It's all now one thing. Uh, and any visitors to the old site will go straight to the new one. On my Cheeky Tech site, you will find uh, everything about me. You'll find all the latest uh, exhibitions that I can come up with and any ones that I'm going to attend they'll all be on there again it's early days I'm still populating things and I'm still learning how to do it again I've built the website all on my own so it's been a learning curve by far um, but it's been fun along with all the projects I've been doing also you'll find great news about the uh, Great British Model Railway Challenge which is going to be on Channel 5 in November and all that info will eventually populate in that uh, in that page but obviously with all the projects and all that's going on, I can't tell you too much because it's all about the TV series. So as soon as that's aired and that's all on, uh, all the other little stuff behind the scenes that um, that nobody will see apart from you guys because that'd be very special footage. I've got all that and uh, we'll show that literally um, once the show airs at that same time. I've also got some exciting news happening at that time as well. Again, I can't share that until that is actually announced. So <gasps> busy times, lots going on. So no spoilers on this one. Anyway, it's been a really, really busy month. I'd just like to say thank you so much to everybody that supports and all your comments. I do try to answer all your comments. I get so many um, 
lovely comments, feedback, and uh, it's just here, great to hear what you guys are doing. And do tell me what you're doing and how you're getting on. Um, it, it's really great, and it helps me model um, to help you model. So it's that's how we do it. Uh, that's what we do. Um, that's about it really, uh, thanks to all my subscribers, the channel is going up like a rocket, uh, you're all following and you're watching my videos and uh, I have a job keeping up, um, but I do keep up and I do watch your videos, um, so please hang in, um, I do love YouTube, I do love um, the railways that we all uh, intertwine and enjoy, and that's the way it should be, we should all enjoy uh, model railways, our hobby, crafting, whatever we do. 